today on Real Ghost Stories Online, the haunted farm. Was the old man they saw a farmer who had previously farmed the land? And what about the shadow figure? Did it have anything to do with a bloody Bender family? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. It is, and we love to hear your real ghost stories, so share one if you've got one. You can call in anytime at 855 853-4802. You can also write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. If you like an ad-free version of the show along with advanced episodes and access to the archive, which by the way is huge, you can become a premium subscriber. Go to Apple Podcasts. You can try it there three days free or sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or at ghostpodcast.com. Kathy Gordon with me today, my sister, I hey. think you're going to get a kick out of this story in a creepy sort of way because yeah. this is literally right down the street from you. It is. It's very close to me. Very interesting. I'm I'm super excited to hear all about this so today. So I Googled today. She wrote in from Cherry Vale, Kansas, a little bitty town in Kansas. And it looks like it's 30 miles like straight south of you. Straight south. That's right. Are you familiar with the Bloody Bender family? I am a little bit. Yeah, I, I actually visited the monument marker site there. It's kind of weird that they have a monument marker yeah. site for the Bloody Bender family. Well, it was or is it more in deal. tribute to the people who died? Well, I think it was just one of those like historical marker things like that they put out. Here. It wasn't like it was, you know, glorifying them or something, but it just was, you know, you know how you do, yeah. you're driving along and you see these historical markers. And of course I pulled over and it said on this site, you know, this is the ground or something to that effect. Did that about creep you out once you read that? Yeah. And I also watched a documentary about this one time. So we're going to get into this story. And if people are like, what the heck are they talking about? Bloody Bender family. I'm circling back after we read this ghost story that somebody wrote in. Then we'll talk about the Bloody Bender family. I've got some information on them. It's very interesting and and, um, very creepy, very murderous. So anyway, here's the story. Hello, I listen to your show at work since I work overnights. This story happened around mid-2014. Me and my then-husband lived in Cherryvale, Kansas, and we both worked for a local farmer. We lived on one of the pieces of farmland called Finley Farm. It was named after the family that once owned the property. I believe they were German immigrants, and they raised sheep and dairy cattle. This piece of farmland was about three miles as the crow flies from the famous Bloody Benders homestead. They were a murderous family famous in the area. The Bender family would invite travelers to their home and then murder them and drop their bodies down a chute. So that's what we'll get into once we read the story. It's that yeah. kind of creepy. Yeah. Back to the farm we lived on. I'll do my best to describe the layout. The property was both farmland and pasture, all fenced and cross-fenced. As you went into one of the gates... There was a dirt path that led up to an open spot. On your left was an old wooden two-story farmhouse, and directly behind it was an old garage and then a wooden boxcar used for storage. The farmhouse hadn't been lived in for over 50 years. On the right was a small pasture. Then directly across from the boxcar was a small barn. This is where it opened some. To the right behind the small barn was some woods, and directly in front was open pasture. On your left stood a large milking barn with a hayloft. As you walked through this barn, it opened to a small feedlot and another barn about 100 yards in front. There was a lot of buildings on this. Man, that was a good-sized farm, yeah. This barn was used for the sheep, and it had two boxcars on each side and opened in the middle. To your right was a pond and pasture, and to the left was fields. Many people told me that you could see the lights in the windows of the house at night. I did see a light a couple of times coming up the road towards home, but always dismissed it, even though there weren't any other houses a mile in each direction, north and south. We had people working with us that would leave before dark if we were working on the farm, only stating that they were scared of the shadows and the screams. Oh my goodness. Right? That's why I wonder if this does have something with the bloody benders. Um, Oh. 
My husband and I had orphan calves in the large barn and would feed them when we got home at night. We tried to get there before dark only because there wasn't any light out there. That night we were feeding the calves and when we were done we started walking back up towards our trailer which was directly across from the farmhouse on the other side of the fence. That would be a creepy place to live. Well, if there's yes. a, a house that sometimes lights come on, nobody's lived in it for 50 years, obviously no electricity in it, screams Ooh. and groans. Yeah. As we came out of the barn, a darker than dark shadow, at least seven feet, came across in front of us. We moved quickly toward our trailer. As we got to our back porch, we heard what I describe as a growl and howl all in one. Our cattle dog came bolting up crying and hid under the porch till daylight. Oh. I personally saw two or three times an older man in blue overalls wearing a red and black plaid shirt by the sheep barn leaning on a fence. He would always just kind of smile and wave and was gone. I mentioned to a friend about the happenings and she wanted her paranormal group to investigate the property. Another member of her group told stories that were said to happen, so that intrigued her. I set up the investigation, and they were supposed to come out around 10 and stay until 1 or 2 a.m. That night, I was working late and got home about 10.30. That group was packing up and leaving. I asked what was wrong, and all she would say was that she'd message me. I heard about a week later from another member of the team that they saw a huge, darker-than-dark shadow move right in front of them, and then heard the growl and howl. They crapped their pants and left. Oh, wow. That's really something if the if a paranormal team decides th- th- this is too much. At 1030. Yeah. They got there at 10. It's like, we're leaving. They saw something oh right goodness. away. The other member did say they got several EVPs inside the barn, and one asked, why are you here? I think it was the old man looking out for his property. Another one said, we are all dead. I still think to this day how funny a supposed seasoned paranormal team didn't last 30 (laughs) minutes when I lived out there for six years. (laughs) Yeah, that's my thought too. Thanks. I love your show. I have many more stories to tell. So it really seems like two totally separate things. Like the man, just the way she sees him, Seems like an old farmer who's connected Uh to that land. You know, farmers are really literally connected to their land. They're out on it all day. They're growing things. They're feeding animals. They're on the land all the time. And so you would be really, Mm -hmm. really attached to the land. I'm sure that he, you know, he kind of, she said, he kind of smiled and waved. She saw him a a few times where he smiled and waved at her. And he probably saw them as people that were caretaking, doing good things there And so they were okay. But it sounds like there was this other thing that was not so friendly. Doesn't seem at all like they're connected to me. No. And maybe the old man is there to kind of protect everybody from that thing. Yeah. But when I read it, I was like, is that thing connected to the Bloody Bender family? So I did a little dive on the Bloody Bender family. So let's talk about them, okay? Okay. So the Bender family, more well known as the Bloody Benders, America's first family of serial killers. That just sounds like some sort of TV show. (laughs) They were a family who lived and operated in Labette County, Kansas. So that's just south of you. They were there from May 1871 to December 1872. Oh, not very long. Uh Uh-uh. The family consisted of John Bender, his wife Elvira, their son John Jr., and daughter Kate. While popular retelling of the story holds that John Jr. and Kate were siblings, some contemporary newspapers reported that several of the Bender's neighbors had stated that they claimed to be married, possibly in a common law marriage. So they really don't know about the kids. Okay. And I think that they were so odd that no one ever really got to know them very well. It says, while there was no definitive number, estimates report that the Benders killed at least a dozen travelers before their crimes were discovered. The fate of the family remains unknown, which I think is really interesting. They don't know what happened to them. 
No, and back don't. then you could take off in the middle of the night and you'd be hard to find. It's not like a GPS is going to track you down. Well, just head west, mm-hmm. you know, east, north, start or over south. again. Exactly. Um, theories range from a lynching of the family to a successful escape. So that's how much they don't know about what happened to this family. There's a lot of folklore and legends surrounding the benders, making it difficult to separate fact from fiction. So that apparently they had operated kind of a general store in an inn, so people would be traveling and they would stay with them. Mm-hmm. And several people had gone missing. Some had been found brutally murdered. They were discovered when the wrong guy went missing. Dr. William Henry York was actually looking for a man and his 18-month-old daughter who went missing. And I'll add in here, I don't think that they were victims necessarily of the Bender family. I think they went missing. He went looking for them. He ended up staying with the Bender family and was never seen again. He Mm. was from a very prominent family, and his brother organized a search party. Like I think his brothers were state senators here in Kansas. So his brother organized a search party of 75 men. They tracked him to the Bender Inn. They weren't able to find anything there, so they left. A few days later, a local noticed that animals on the Bender property were dead or starving. Upon investigating, elected township officer Leroy Dick found that the property had been abandoned and that there was a bad odor coming from a trapdoor nailed shut and underneath a bed. Mm-hmm. It and, was in the house. Yeah, it was in the house. His subsequent call for a search party turned up hundreds of locals wielding shovels and pickaxes. They were ready to search the Bender Inn and property. So underneath the trap door was an empty room where they found the smell coming from clotted blood that had soaked through the stone floor into the soil below. Not finding any bodies, the search made its way to Elvira and Kate's vegetable garden and apple mm. orchard, where oh, they no. would find Dr. York buried in a shallow grave. By the next day, at least 10 bodies had been recovered from the garden and well, along with additional dismembered body parts. Oh, boy. This, I hate that. Right? The same mod- uh-huh. modus operandi. The victims were hit in the head, likely with a hammer, beha- before having their throat slit. Go. Oh was evident on all bodies except, except that of Mary Ann, who was, I'm not sure who Mary Ann was, somebody who had been murdered, um, who was likely buried alive. <gasps> oh, And then this no. part is really creepy. Many of the bodies had also been, and this is quotes, this is what they said back then in the 1800s, indecently mutilated, suggesting oh. genital trauma. Oh, no. Yeah. So based on the evidence and stories told by survivors of the Bender Inn, it's believed that their guests were given the seat of honor at the dining table, which backed up against the canvas room divider positioned over the trap door to the cellar. Once their victim was sitting, one of the men would knock the visitor out with a hammer from behind. One of the women women would then slit the victim's throat to make sure they were dead. I don't know how they could have really... How they knew that exactly. Because who would have been a survivor of that? Exactly. I think once it got that far, you wouldn't have sur- survived that. Right. They wouldn't have let you. The body would then be dropped through the trap door, stripped, and later buried or dismembered. Though some victims were wearing valuables or carrying cash, a lack of targeting suggests the benders killed for the thrill, not for the money. Around a dozen bullet holes were also found in the cabin likely from victims who tried to fight back. And then they escaped prior to discovery and were never found. And there's a lot of different theories on, like there was apparently at one time a woman and a younger woman, an older woman, younger woman traveling together, and people had heard, you know, they were kind of legendary. And they're like, that's a Bender woman. But it wasn't, you know, so it was just kind of suspicious. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you were just innocently traveling with your daughter, people could be like, oh, my God, it's the Bender women. Yeah. But I get how people would have been very highly frightened by the situation. And could that be them? They could be anywhere. Well, that's right. I think personally that they probably got away. I do, too. I think once they came looking for Dr. York, they were like, we're out of here. And they mm-hmm. just took off. Their property was 160 acres, which is a lot of land. That's a lot of space. 
So they didn't have any neighbors right next to them. So it could they could have easily gotten away. Nobody noticed. And then oh, I think so. Somebody I, realized the animals weren't being cared for. Yeah. Back then, they could have just loaded up and taken off and started over again in San Francisco or in you know anywhere. And you some wonder, little town out in Colorado or something. You just never know. And who knows? They maybe kept up doing what they right, were doing. That's what I was going to say. And maybe they changed the way they were doing it so they never associated the two. I don't know. Yeah. It seems like they would have done it for money. But well, if they found cash and valuables. Mm-hmm. So but, it, you know, they could have just continued doing this and never been caught the second time. Or the third, if they packed up and moved again, you know, right. they could have just moved every couple, three years and continued doing this. Because these are the kind of people that I wouldn't think would just stop. And they had probably done it before because they were German immigrants. He, They said he was around 60. And I'm going to guess Elvira was close to his age. And then the two mm-hmm. younger were in their 20s. And so that makes me think it didn't just start. He didn't just start at 60 doing this. Well, maybe he did it in Germany. That's my guess is that they just never were caught. So after I read that story, that's why I kind of did a deep dive. And there's even more to this story. I, I kind of did a condensed version. But then I'm thinking, she said she lived three miles as the crow flies from the Bender property, which was 160 Mm -hmm. acres. So that's really close. Mm -hmm. Maybe even some of that land that she farmed was some of their land originally. Do you think maybe that seven foot tall shadow figure had anything to do with the Bender family? I mean, they're so close. Yeah, they are so close. And what would still be there to do the haunting would be these people that had gone through there, right? Mm -hmm. Because the benders, I I mean, maybe could come back to that area. That would be so evil. I don't know. There's so much negativity and dark energy there. Mm -hmm. That does Mm -hmm. that just stick around? That strange growl and howl thing and the dog hiding under the porch, you know, not wanting to come out until morning. That was just a creepy story. Yes. I liked it, though, in a, yeah. in a have, twisted have sort of Have there ever been any ghost sightings or any paranormal activity associated with the Benderland in your research? Did you hear anything no, about I, that? I, I didn't have time to really look into that, but I'd like to, so I'm still yeah. going to do a little bit more research. The farmhouse is no longer there. I think that's long gone since that was from 1870. I think that's gone a long time Mm. ago. But you can't get rid of that dark energy that happened on that land. And, you know, if they found 10 or 12 people, how many other people died? Exactly. That's who they found. And you think about back then, it wasn't like we had phones. It wasn't like we were communicating with our families on a daily basis, letting them know we're okay while we're traveling. You might not hear from somebody for... A couple, two or three months. That story just really got me thinking today. So thank you very much for writing that one in. I really liked that one. Very scary. As soon as that came out that I really liked it, I feel weird saying that. But I thought it was very interesting. Let's go with that. Well, we're history buffs. We love the history stuff. (laughs) And so this does have history, even though it's creepy history. It's history. It's definitely history. And it's interesting because this is not very far from me where I live. And it's a, it is kind of a beautiful area. I know what she's talking about when she's talking about these farmsteads that down there, they are really pretty. They're, they're wooded around sides and there's ponds and, you know, all these buildings and things, but at night that's very scary. Very dark. It's yeah, very, very dark. dark. Like it literally really dark out there. Yeah. Night. A lot of trees. If, when you think of that area, it looks more like the Ozarks, mm-hmm. really. Yeah. It's kind of the beginning of the Ozarks down there. So very creepy. Well, she needs to write in some more stories. If you like the show and want an ad-free experience, sign up to be a premium subscriber through applepodcast.com. Try for three days absolutely free. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. For all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thank you for listening.